Hi everyone, my name is Chris. Thank you for uh, taking this time to visit our website. Uh, while you're here, I might just show you a couple of little things around, around, the, around the vessel here and explain some of the safety equipment we need if we're going to go in enclosed waters. You'll also find this list in your New South Wales Maritime Handbook, but uh, I thought it might be a bit more real if we just explain it to you uh, right here and now. Hi students, the uh, session we're going through today is the TDMF 5707A and as you realise that is all about the safety equipment required for a coastal vessel. It's divided into two categories, the enclosed waters and the open waters. So right now we'll run through the equipment you need for the enclosed waters. So we're just going to demonstrate some of that and the use thereof. Okay, safety equipment for enclosed waters. First off the top we have our life jackets. We've got one here. This is a uh, coastal type uh, life jacket, it's a type 1. We know it's a type 1 because it's got the head pillow that rests behind our head. And the difference in reality is that this type of life jacket will actually roll you over onto your, onto your back. So if you're unconscious in the water, this is the type of life jacket you want to you wanna hope you've got on. This has the reflective tape here on for attracting attention. This also has a little whistle down here for attracting attention. And also has the light on it for attracting attention. And if we were to turn that light on, we'd notice, if it's not too bright, that that's an ISO 2 light. ISO 2 means it's on for one, off for one, on for one, off for one. It's a continuous, continuously flashing white light. With these life jackets, the trick is to put the life jacket on before you jump into the water. They're quite difficult once you're in the water because they're really hard to get this knot around the front of you to, to get the bow tied nice and tight. If you don't get it tight, you find that the life jacket rides up and this part here ends up underneath your chin and you can get some really bad chafing from, the, uh, from that rubbing against your chin. So tight, nice and tight before you jump in the water. Jump in the water and as you jump in you hold down the top of the life jacket and keep it held down as you jump in feet first. Another type of life jacket we've got. This is also a type 1 life jacket. We know it's type 1 because it's got the piece behind the neck. This has a, uh, a release button here so this is a manual release. So inside the jacket here we have a gas canister. So we pull on the pin here, that'll release the gas from the gas canister and that'll inflate the whole life jacket. This life jacket also has a, a, a ring here for harnessing up on a lifeline on a yacht. So if we're going outside we should always be harnessed up. So this is a very useful life jacket for that purpose. The other side here we have the uh, whistle for attracting attention and we have the blowpipe in case the life jacket has a small leak in it or the, the uh, gas canister wasn't filled, this one we can manually inflate the life jacket. That's a very useful feature. Another type of type 1 is this fellow. We know this is a type 1. It's got the piece behind our neck. It's manually inflated. It has the uh, pull cord. But this also can be automatically inflated. It has a, a salt pill in here. When that gets wet, that dissolves and that'll inflate the whole life jacket. So this is said to be manual and automatic. So this is a pretty useful life jacket as well. On the other side, same procedure. We have the whistle for attracting attention and we have the manual blowpipe. So with our life jackets, we need to decide when's the better time to wear which particular life jacket. So sometimes if we're outside on a yacht, an example might be if we get hit in the head with a boom and we get knocked overboard and we're unconscious, we want to be hope that we've got this type of life jacket on. This one, will, the salt pill will get wet and the whole life jacket will inflate. It'll roll us over on our back because remember, it's a type one and we'll stay afloat. If we had this particular life jacket on, we'd be still in a lot of trouble if we're uh, unconscious because we're not conscious enough to be able to pull the pull cord to inflate the whole life jacket. So we're still in a lot of trouble. Or we could have our old favorite, a bit hard for this one to fail. And with this one, remember, it's a type one. It'll so it'll roll us over and we'll stay there unconscious, but we'll be face up, able to breathe. So our next piece of uh, equipment we need for enclosed waters is our bilge pump. So on a, a boat like this, we've got an electric bilge pump, so it runs off the battery. So as long as we've got power, etc., etc., that bilge pump is going to run. Sometimes the cautious, caution with these boats is sometimes you'll find that some people hit that little rocker switch and the bilge pump stays on, uh, on when there's no water in it so it can easily burn itself out. So you need some sort of procedures where you can monitor that. We also have, in case that does happen to us, we've got a uh, manual bilge pump. So this is a little plastic bucket, nice flat bottom here, so we can scoop up a nice bucket of water with that to bail our boat out in the case of emergency. 
The next piece of equipment is our waterproof torch. So not only does it have to be waterproof, it has to be also buoyant. And this is compulsory equipment to carry even in daylight hours. You can be asked for your waterproof torch. The next item is our fire extinguisher. So we've got a little extinguisher here. Remember, the best one for boats is the dry powder one. It's the one with the white band on it. Sometimes it's called dry powder, and sometimes it's called ABE, because it fights the A fires, which are paper or wood. It fights the B fires, which are a, a liquid fire, and even fights the E fires, which are electrical fires. So ABE or dry powder, you can't really go wrong with one of these on your boat. These have to be serviced, so every 12 months the extinguisher has to be serviced and should have a little tag on it here to show when it was its last uh, service date. Oh. Next thing we need is our fire bucket. So this is a bucket that should be sturdy enough to throw over the side to scoop up a bucket of water to throw over our fire. So these ones are collapsible, so these are handy for these small boats because they store up nice and easily. I landed is our rope, so this can be thrown over the side drag, give it a little while to fill up, and pull him up, whoa, jeez, bloody heavy, pull him up, and we've got our bucket of water. So remember, compulsory equipment for all vessels on enclosed waters. Fold him up like that, and you can store him away. Next thing we need is our anchor. So every boat, enclosed waters, we need an anchor. There's three different types of main types of anchors, but this one we've got today, this is, oops, this is our sand anchor. So the whole trick to anchoring a vessel up is we've got to look at these flutes here, and we've got this shank, and look at the ratio between these two here, the relationship, and what we're trying to do, pull this shank here in a horizontal direction. If we pull that horizontally, that those points, the shoot, the uh, flutes, have got no choice but to hook up. So they'll drive in like a plough, and it'll drive itself deeper and deeper. On the other hand, if we pull it on an angle like this, the, all that'll happen is the, sh the anchor will scoot along the bottom of the water, and it'll never dig in. So we have to change the scope by laying the shank down. That's why the more chain we've got on an anchor, the better the anchor will work, because we're using the weight of the chain to weigh the shank down. So this ratio is called our scope. So we should start like a three to one scope, that's the ratio between the depth of water to how much road we let out. Three to one and go up as far as eight to one, depending if, uh, on the conditions and if we're going to get off the boat. So. Our next piece of uh, compulsory equipment is our lights. So we have to have navigation lights. So we have a port light, red one on our left, a green one, starboard on our right, and about less than 12 metres, we need an all round white light. So it's a 360 degree light. The last little thing we need is a sound signal. So you might have an air horn, it might be little canisters with, uh, with uh, just an air horn, or you might have an electric one like we've got on this boat. So remember the sound signals, one blast to turn to starboard, two to turn to port, three to operate a stern propulsion, and five to indicate to the other vessel that you're not sure what it's doing. And that's pretty much it for the enclosed waters. Okay, so we've previously discussed the equipment we need for enclosed waters, so now we're going to open waters. So it's the previous equipment plus the addition to this stuff. So you can't, you can't get away with your anchor and your chain and your, your rope and your fire bucket. You still need all that equipment. So this is in addition. So one important thing is the life jackets. Now that we're in open waters, only type ones will count in open waters. That's the first thing. And remember, it's compulsory to wear that life jacket if you're crossing any coastal bar in New South Wales. Next thing we need is our flares. So flares, you can buy these in a packet like this. We need two red and two orange. Our red's our nighttime flare, and the orange is the daytime flare. The orange one's actually a smoke flare, and the red one is a actually glow, like a big glow stick. So there's a procedure for letting those off. I've got a, a demonstration one here. You hold onto the plastic handle. This is a nylon handle, so because this gets, this gets pretty warm, we take off the cap, we pull the little other plug. And there's normally a string attached to that. We let that flare go. We hold the flare nice and high above our head. We want the wind blowing away from us. So have the smoke blowing away nice and high. This will burn for 60 seconds and the daytime flare can be seen for seven or eight miles in the daytime. The next thing we have is our V-sheet. So I won't pull this out of the packet. It's a hell of a job to get these back in. 
you never seem to fold them back up into that box into that packet again so this is an orange plastic sheet with a black V on it it's just a contrasting color thing this is an international code of distress so if you get yourself into trouble you get your V sheet out you lay it out on the cabin roof so that other vessels in the area can see that you need assistance and if you see another vessel with a V sheet out displayed your duty to lend assistance is said to be absolute you've got no choice you have to lend assistance without putting your vessel and people in danger next thing we need is our marine radio our marine radio is slightly different this is required if we're going to be two nautical miles offshore remember the channel to monitor with our marine radio is channel 16 and to use a marine radio we need a marine radio operator certificate of proficiency it's called a MRO VCP that's your radio license so it's another little course that you can come back and do one um, evening to go with our radio we also need an EPIRB so this is the 406.028 EPIRB so this is compulsory equipment for two miles offshore the way these operate we can manually turn this fellow on by flipping that switch over this sends a signal up to satellites that sends it down to a land station the land station then sends the signal back to Canberra they have an international register of EPIRBs and so they'll look up whose EPIRB it is and they'll uh, they'll ready some assistance for you so this is the most valuable piece of equipment you can carry if you go outside always take your EPIRB we also have to have a chart chart of the area that we're operating in so if we're going up to Brisbane we might need six of these charts we could spend half a day for talking about for different charts for different uh, and all the equipment all the uh, items that you can find on your chart but this one's a simple chart of uh, Sydney Harbour this is called Oz 200 this is a metric chart um, because there's so much information that you can learn from these charts we've actually started doing another little course it's called a night navigation course where we go through all the inf information on these charts and how to use them so you will also find another link on our video and you can come back and have a look at that information there next thing we need is our compass it could be a fixed compass on the helm station or it could be a handheld compass the beauty of these compasses the handheld ones is you can take uh, bearings of different things around the around that you can uh, find on your chart take a shot at it convert it into true and draw that on your chart that way we do we can do a fix we can do all sorts of things with our handheld compass but that's all part of the night navigation course that we do a little bit later the last item we need for open waters is our water we need to carry two liters per person so on a little boat like this we don't have any holding tanks whatsoever so if we go outside we have to carry water in containers just like your two liter team say two liters per person on a bigger boat you'll have big holding tanks so you won't have to worry too much about water but this sort of vessel no holding tanks so we carry water if we go outside and that's the end of our equipment for enclosed and open waters